Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the U.S. Battleship Line Redo. This is the Tier 9 Iowa class battleship. The Iowa class consisted of six planned but four completed ships. The four completed ships are the USS Iowa, USS New Jersey, USS Missouri, and USS Wisconsin. The USS Kentucky and USS Illinois were laid down but never completed. The Kentucky was the furthest along of the two. She was basically the ship without the guns and the superstructure. And she would later be refloated, and there were a couple of design plans for her to turn her into a guided missile battleship, into an aircraft carrier at one point. They had a lot of really interesting designs for her, but ultimately she ended up getting used for spare parts for the other ships. In fact, I believe it was Wisconsin that rammed another ship, and the front half of Kentucky was used to repair that damage. The Iowa class is an improvement upon the preceding South Dakota class battleships, which we don't have in the game, unfortunately, at least not until they decide to put the Alabama in. The South Dakota class battleships were also a product improved North Carolina class battleships, featuring that internal armor scheme that we'll talk about in just a minute. The original design plans called for a ship that was capable of 33 knots while being armed with 16 inch guns of 50 caliber in length. The preceding South Dakota and the North Carolina classes used those 45 caliber length guns, so they're a little bit shorter in overall length. The increased length provided additional shell speed, which allowed for extra range, as well as a little bit better punching power at those ranges. The width limitations of the Panama Canal limited the overall width of the ship, which gives us this long, elegant, and sleek shape that we see. It almost looks, for lack of a better phrase, aerodynamic, and it's really a beautiful shape. It's one of the most iconic shapes for a battleship. Any Just about anybody who knows anything of naval warships can identify an Iowa-class battleship just by these hull lines. It is by far one of the most beautiful ships ever made. And yes, I'm biased. So don't, <laughs> don't be too angry with me. In terms of armor, it is really a common misconception that the Iowas did not have any resistance to the Mark 8 super heavy shells that they would fire. That's simply not true. The Iowas did have an immunity zone to the Mark 8 shell, but it was so narrow that the Bureau of Ordnance for the Navy refused to classify it as a, quote, balanced armor design. The preceding South Dakota and North Carolina classes were technically balanced armor designs against the lighter Mark 5 shell. Technically, the Iowa carries on that resistance to the Mark V AP shell, which is what the Colorado fires in this game. However, when they switched to the Mark VIII, which came out right as these ships were nearing completion, there was no way that they could feasibly go back and change the armor. And even if they did, it would slow the ships down, which is not what they wanted to do, because they wanted these ships to be able to support carrier attack groups as well as support land operations. So they do have an immunity zone, it's just it's very, very narrow, and it obviously, being in-game, will never experience the true joys of an immunity zone simply because of the way this game's distances are compressed. Even in spite of all of that, the Missouri and Wisconsin did receive thicker front bulkheads, and that is represented in the Missouri in-game. We talked about that in the premium review for the Missouri, so I won't cover it again here. Those thicker front bulkheads were put in place specifically because... The anticipation of receiving more incoming fire from directly ahead due to the speed of the ship. So it was designed to improve their, their survivability in that regard. These ships also served on and off again in various forms from 1943 when they were launched in commission until 2006. And in 2006, Wisconsin and Iowa were finally struck from the Naval Registry. The last two battleships to ever exist on the surface of the Earth in any Navy was in 2006 with the Wisconsin and the Iowa. In terms of service histories, the USS New Jersey is by far the most decorated battleship of the four. She received 19 battle stars for her service in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Gulf War. She was the only battleship to serve in the Navy during the Vietnam War, and she was specifically reactivated due to the loss of pilots that were on bombing missions, they wanted to use shell support in order to uh, support troops on the ground. And she was the only one to do this. And, and 
neat, none of the other three were were called out of the mothball fleet for that purpose. The New Jersey and the Iowa during World War II, during the Operation Hailstone, which is the attack on the truck lagoon, were able to straddle the fleeing Japanese cruiser Nowaki at 35,000 yards with their first salvo. They would continue to straddle Nowaki until 39,000 yards when they were ordered to cease fire. And that was in World War II. Now, they didn't sink her, but they in that same battle, they did fire upon another cruiser, Katori, interestingly enough, the one that's in-game, and their shelling would contribute to her sinking, and they fired high-capacity shells at her. They didn't even bother to fire armor piercing at her. During the 1980s refits and modernizations of the four Iowa-class battleships, the gunfire control system, that Ford Mark 1A computer, was left intact by the Navy. After conducting a number of studies on that analog fire control computer, it was determined that replacing it with an electronic computer would not provide any appreciable gains in accuracy. In fact, the only things they did to improve the accuracy on the Iowas were more consistent powders and Doppler radars on the turrets to measure the shell velocity so that they could get more accurate shot-to-shot velocities. And that really brought their accuracy down. In fact, if you go to the NavWeps article for the Mark 7 uh, guns, which are the 16-inch 50 caliber Mark 7 guns, they will give you all of the test shot patterns on that webpage. It's really cool to look at. Anyway, in terms of in-game performance, the Iowa is an incredibly capable and flexible ship. She's very, very fast at 33 knots, and she can even go faster with the speed flags. She is relatively maneuverable for a Tier 9 battleship, and that's including the nerfed rudder shift time as well as the artificially nerfed turning circle radius. Now, we'll cover it in the stats, but I I just want to briefly point this out. The real Iowa-class battleships had a 700-meter tactical diameter at 30 knots. What that means is that these ships could make a 180-degree turn in 700 meters. If you think that's impressive... The running joke during the time was that the Iowas could outturn a Fletcher, which is a destroyer. Also of interesting note, the Yamato is another ship that suffers from uh, artificially nerfed ra- uh, turning circle. Hers was 640 meters. Like the North Carolina before her, her belt armor is not thick enough to prevent Citadel hits when broadside. And it, it's because of those close-in ranges that, that we, we start to see the problems with the, the the game mechanics and the way that these ships were designed. So the end result of this is that these ships have very soft broadsides and it absolutely requires you angling towards targets. If you have to turn around, you want to make sure you do it either with hard cover between you and the ships that are shooting at you or with stealth if you can do that or in smoke if you can do that. That's part of this next problem is that her speed opens you up to getting into so much trouble because you end up pushing too far into enemy lines with this ship and you can't properly protect the sides of the ship. You have to stay at reasonable speeds with this ship once you get close to combat so that you don't overextend. You need to always have some level of support with you, otherwise these ships get real frustrating to play really easily. Of course, No U.S. battleship is complete without the national flavor of absolutely ridiculous anti-aircraft batteries. This ship has an insane amount of anti-aircraft batteries, and it is very capable of destroying Tier 8, 9, and 10 aircraft with relative ease. The main battery is also reasonably accurate out to about 15 kilometers. After that, it starts to open up a little too much to really count on it, but occasionally you'll get some just wickedly tight groupings that just don't make any sense from the the game standpoint. All right, let's talk about the stats of this ship. The Iowa-class battleships have a 79,000 hit point pool. There's the armor. You can see it there, 307 millimeters at the belt. (laughs) Thicker on the turret faces. The torpedo damage system is 27% reduction in that damage. The main battery does consist of nine of the triple gun. Sorry. How it's. Yeah, triple gun. 
turrets. Who cares what they're actually called? <laughs> There's three guns per barrel. They can all be independently elevated. Uh, total of nine total, two, four, one aft. They do have a main battery firing range of 23.3 kilometers. The secondary battery consists of the 10 dual 5-inch 38 cal dual-purpose guns and the Mark 32 mounts. There's five of them on each side. They do have a main battery or a, a battery, secondary battery firing range of 7.2 kilometers. That's with AFT. That's for that any aircraft build. You can push it out a little bit further with the flags as well as the, the module, but don't I don't know what the number is for that off the top of my head. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, she has 32 of the dual 20mm Orlikans, 19 of the quad 40mm Bofors, and of course those 25-inch guns and the 10 dual 5-inch 38 cal dual purpose mounts. Her anti-aircraft circle starts at 7.2 kilometers with 183 DPS, and that is without the manual fire AA ability, captain skill. So imagine this ship with it. It gets pretty intense. Her maximum speed is 33 knots. This ship has the speed flag on it, which bumps it up to 34.6, so almost 35 knots in a battleship. That turning radius is 920 meters, which is way longer than it should be. It should only be 700 meters at 30 knots. The rudder shift time is 15.6 seconds, which is relatively good for a Tier 9 battleship. But the real power of the Iowa comes from the stealth build. Her stealth is insane. 12.2 kilometers by other ships, 11 by air. Imagine this thing popping up off your broadside at 12 kilometers. It's pretty nuts when you think about it. All right, let's talk about those upgrades. Main Armaments Mod 1. AA Guns Mod 2. And this is the new one for Tier 9. I've chosen Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2. And what that does is it decreases your maximum dispersion by 11%. That takes it from like 296 down to... 261 the other viable option that i will probably switch back to once carriers gameplay starts to pick up again is aa guns mod 3 which increases the damage of your second or sorry your anti-aircraft guns by 25 percent there are some people that have chosen to run the full secondary build on the iowa it's not a horrible build but I really think the AA guns are where this ship is really strong. That is another option. I have seen people also run the reload module, but I find that you actually have to hit with your ship in order to make the most of this module. And quite honestly, this ship, it doesn't feel accurate enough without Artillery Plotting Room 1, or sorry, Artillery Plotting Room 2 in order for me to run the reload module. That reload module also comes with the added disadvantage of your turrets turning slower, which can't be offset easily by expert marksmen. And one of the strong suits of this is the fact that the turrets can keep up with the ship in a turn. You can actually turn the turrets against the turn of the ship. The fourth slot, I'm going to run Damage Control Systems Mod 1. There's really no reason to run anything else. Steering Gears Mod 2 is definitely a requirement in my eyes, to get uh, any ship, I, I don't, there are few ships in this game that I would choose any other option. I have seen some people run Propulsion Mod 2. This helps these ships get from 0 to 6 knots relatively quickly. Personally, I don't find myself stationary very often, so I don't find this nearly as useful as I find the rudder shift module to be. And of course, the last slot I run, Concealment Systems Mod 1, for the 10% reduction in detection range. That helps get to that 12.2 kilometer detection range. Tor Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1 isn't a terrible choice by any stretch of the imagination. Don't feel bad if you choose it over Concealment Systems Mod 1. I personally prefer the Stealth build. It allows you a little bit better flexibility in making those dangerous turns to get away from bad situations. Other people make better use of the Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1 simply because uh, that's the way that they play. I personally prefer the Concealment build. So those are the modules. Let's dive on into the battle video. It's right around 100k in terms of damage. Okay, so this battle is... If I remember correctly, I think we got some Tier 10s that snuck into this battle. Yes! 
In fact, there are tier 10s on both teams, Montana and Kerr first for the battleships, Zhao, Zhao, and Gearing on the other team. That double Zhao combo is kind of a pain in the butt when you think about it, but overall the teams were, were fairly well balanced. I can't complain too much about the way that they laid out. Now this map is by far my least favorite map for the high tier games. If you don't know why, it's because the giant gap in the middle with absolutely no cover in it whatsoever. These maps usually devolve into this long-range sniping fest, and quite honestly, I really, really dislike this map because of it. I really do like those islands. I know we've talked about it in other videos. The playing around in the islands is always what I like to do. In this case, we're going to hover around the southern side of this map and uh, try and get ourselves into this outer ring until it's safe to push on in. And we will eventually get on into that center ring and get into some pretty good fighting here. Like I said, the damage is just over 100,000 damage. And you can see we are going guns right. And I'm going to try and show you here the gun angles. You do have relatively good angles. However, I find that if you try and use the full broadside of these, uh, it really, really really opens you up to citadel hits one of the weak areas of other uh, the iowa in general is that gap between the number one and number two turrets if you manage to hit that area in another battleship at about that 30 degree angle range you will citadel these ships quite reliably and so angling to get that other gun into bear there you can see the angle really really opens you up to a lot of bad news. So if you plan on using that rear gun for anything, you really need to be, you know, wagging the tail just enough to unmask it and then bringing it back in. And that's going to require a lot of experience with the ship to be able to do that reliably without turning too far and, and opening yourself up too much. But as you can see, the ship is really quite fast and we're, you know, we're going 30 knots right now as we're charging on into this. We're keeping right on up with the cruisers that are off to my left. Now, of course, both those cruisers, if I remember correctly, one of them is a Zhao. I think the other one is also a Zhao. Yeah. Uh, I wish that these guys would have hung around a little bit longer. So, first customer of the day is, is the Grosser Kerr first, which is a Tier 10 German battleship. We are going to use our stealth to get in as close as we possibly can here. And because I do have some some time here to react, we're gonna go ahead and, and begin firing. Now look at the shot dispersion. That's that's not too shabby when you when you boil it all away. But the problem is there even with the three over we hit with five out of the nine shells. Not not too bad. A little bit over 50% in accuracy. We only did 2,700 damage. One of those hits was a normal penetration that did next to no damage. In fact, I think the only damage I did was the two overpens. So th the nice part is, as you can see, that we do disappear as soon as, you know, the shell boom goes away. Fortunately, I underled that Zao. Now we're pushing into the range at which we're going to start getting spotted. Remember, we have that 12.2 kilometer detection range, so we want to stay angled. Now the Grosser Kerr first has, the, you can tell he has those 420s. The 420s have a, a much better pen angle. Well, maybe they don't have a better pen angle, but they have much better penetration on, uh, on armor. Look at that shot group. My word. I, I, I would believe it if Wargaming came out and said that these guns were the most accurate guns at Tier 9. It would not surprise me one bit. In fact, uh, if, if you guys were watching the Shoot the Red Ships episode, the, they had Pigeon of War on, and Pigeon of War actually said as much, but not in the actual video. He said afterwards, after the, after the fight, so to speak, after the, the podcast was done. So we got a, a Montana here that is, he's going backwards. Again, look at that shot dispersion. Very tight shot group. Unfortunately, all four shells that hit bounce. But again, still hitting with above 
that 50% accuracy rate. Very accurate guns for what they are. And of course, we're at that 12K range, so we are well within the magic range. But he's backing up, and we're we're crawling forward here. He's he's opening himself up so much. Thought maybe we'd be able to get this Zhao here. New Orleans is broadside, but he's kind of squirrely. I think we'll we'll go fishing back and forth. We want Grocer Kerr first or New Orleans. This is the luxury of being stealthed up. You know, you get the time to actually select the target that you wish to engage, and. Okay, we're detected again. We're still angled to all the incoming fire with the exception of the stuff on the far side of the map. One shell hit. Bounced, of course. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start backing up. And I'm, I'm angled just a little bit too much and we end up taking some damage. Not terribly happy about that. So as you can see, gameplay for the Iowa is quite slow, but you also notice that I have next to no support on this end of the map. So I'm doing my best to get out of this situation as best I can so that I can stop taking all the fire. Grocer Kerfer sailing broadside, we take 8,900 damage off of him. And of course, because he couldn't see me when he shot, all of his shots go over me and go towards the other ships behind me. We're backing up and we are once again stealth. This kind of gameplay is... If you ever watch Wo9 play, this is very much his gameplay style. He doesn't run the concealment build, though. Uh, he runs a slightly different build. But this is very much his gameplay style, where you sit bow on, you go back and forth, you go back and forth. Personally, I don't particularly care for this gameplay style, but it just happens to work in this. I don't want to go too far forward because we've got their whole team off to the right-hand side of me, of which, yeah, some of them can actually hit me, so I don't want to, uh, you know get too overextended and allow my broadsides to be hit by them. But by the same token, I, I, I want to stay involved in this fight. And here's another really tight shot dispersion at this grosser curve first. And... Yeah, there's 17,000 just bloop, gone. The Mark 8 Super Heavy shell may not have the world's best bounce angles in this game, it, although supposedly it does have more favorable bounce angles. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But uh, it does pack quite the wall up here. And that is really quite nice. So that Zhao is turning away. This Turpitz is ahead of me. We should probably help the Turpitz. We're going to have some awkward Montana on Grocer Kerr first action. I think that's the Montana wishing that it had the armor of the Grocer Kerr first. Very lewd. Should probably censor this or at least put a PG-8. Uh, PG-13 or R-rated... Uh, <laughs> label on the video, but we still did 4,500 damage by shooting at him. Now, I'd be curious to know if the if the shells that impact the deck at that angle with the ship tilted like that would cause extra damage or not. I, I don't know, but with those guys running away, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start pushing on into the middle. The Grosser Kerfurst is broadside to us. We do want to angle in, use that quick rudder shift time to actually angle in. Not a whole lot of damage at this point, though. Only 37,000 damage. I also don't want to get too extended into the middle of this map, simply because of the fact that we are permanently spotted at the moment. I don't want to get too, too involved into this because we don't have any real good broadside protection. Now, the Grosser Kerfurst is going to disappear behind that island, and his gunnery needs much improvement. And... Two shells hit, one broke on impact, and one ricocheted. Thankfully, none of the ships that can cause me serious harm are paying attention to me right now. They are all off to my right. They are all well within range. Unfortunately, we are spotted, so we are going to transition our guns to the right side, and we are going to, to angle away from them. This is the kind of situational awareness that you have to have when playing the Iowa or playing the North Carolina. Wow, Troll's Zhao armor. Do you guys see where that shell impacted? It impacted at the waterline, just behind the funnel, and we got an overpen from it. Anyway, this is the level of situational awareness that you have to have when playing the Iowa or the North Carolina. You simply cannot, one, overextend, which we're getting very close to doing, but two, 
you cannot allow your broadsides to be exposed to any battleships for any length of period of time because any battleship captain is going to go for it. There's a citadel on the Zhao, and there's a New Orleans shooting at us. We, we want to get that fire out, but we don't get it out too soon. Two bounces on the most trollish armor of any cruiser in the game. If that would have been a Hindenburg or a Des Moines or a, a Mazka, it would have been a double Citadel Haven. So we are once again turning away, but look at look at the angle of us to those other battleships. I don't care for this angle. There's an Iowa that's 15k away. I, I just, I need to angle back in, and I would rather expose my broadside to a Zhao than to a battleship. So we are no longer detected again, which is good. We're going to use an ounce of patience to bait the Zhao into turning like he is now. And then we are going to put rounds down range. And here we go. Another Citadel for 16,200 damage. And at this point, their battleship line has kind of faltered a bit. We lost our turpets, unfortunately. That Zhao is effectively out of this fight. We have once again gone stealthed up. We're going to turn and we are going to start pushing into the middle. And they are going to overshoot me because they don't know where I'm at. Yeah. Stealth build Iowa for the win. Also, I will post a link to the Black Blast bags that are you can currently see on this game, uh, the game model. You'll notice that the default is white. I absolutely hated that. I changed it. It is a media fire link. It is not linking to anything harmful. The instructions to install it are quite simple. Just extract it into the res underscore mods folder. Uh, the, the contents of it into the current game file. Uh, sorry, game uh, version. Hipper at long range. 20k shot. Usually not a good shot to take. We can finally turn this way and we can finally start pushing in towards the middle because... The uh, battleships there, they're, they're behind the island, and sink! 85,000 damage. Now in Otago, maybe we'll get our guns up. And we are dis we disappear again. Otago starts turning away, not, not a real good shot. Okay, New Orleans! Let the guns traverse. Oh, get that front gun in there. Okay, so we got all three guns. You can see firing over the shoulder is actually a little bit better. And unfortunately, I under lead the New Orleans, and it'll end up doing any damage to him. We get look at the Zhao. We need to get back into this fight. So I'm going to start turning in. You can see that we have no risk of any battleships or destroyers pushing our left flank. So we can start to push and, and feel a little bit more comfortable about doing so. Grosser Kerr first. Broadside. We're going to go ahead and launch those. My anticipation, you'll notice that I aimed at the top part of his deck. My anticipation there is that he is going to turn out and away. And a little bit of an overlead, but still 10k damage off the Grosser Kerr first. Up to 95,000 damage. Not a huge change in, in damage output. But the Grosser Kerr first, you know, like all the German battleships, is a really soft superstructure. And with the way he was angled, my, my hope was that I might be able to sneak one of those shells just on the upper side of his belt and on top of that angled plate for a Citadel, get a Citadel hit. But getting Citadel hits on German battleships is like, you know, finding a unicorn. Of course, we got a backing up broadside Montana. This is that Montana that was in the, at the very beginning of this match. And uh, I thought maybe he was going to, to go forward again, so I underled him. One of the big problems with having all this range and having all this speed, right? You have all the access to all of the speed that you need to get yourself into a lot of trouble and all the range to constantly miss. <laughs> And down, down goes the Grosser Kerr first. So we are down to that Montana and Udaloy. I don't know what the other destroyer is. And two Zows. Montana's going forward again, finally. So we will, uh, shot out on him. Cool bullet cam. 
and one broke on impact, and one oh, ricocheted. Well, that's annoying. That's annoying as all get out. I'm also permanently spotted. I think that last destroyer is a Kagero, if I remember correctly. And he is somewhere in the mid. So we definitely need to be paying attention to that. Of course, broadside to Zao is not nearly as big of a problem as broadside to that Montana that's ahead of us, as well as turning and getting ourselves torpedoed. Yes, yes, you've started me on fire. How annoying. The Zao is just a, a real big fire starter. We're out of his uh, range of fire. Well, not out of his range, but we're we're out of the, the arc at which he can successfully engage. And we see now that there is smoke up ahead. It gives me an idea of where the destroyer is, so I am going to turn in at the destroyer. And this will hopefully help us miss any incoming torpedoes that might have been coming our way. Unfortunately, I'm not in a Missouri, so I can't pop radar to get this sucker out of his smoke. But, you know, patience. Just be patient. 102,000 damage. He's, he's out of the smoke circle now. He has exposed himself. It is a gearing, and we have an Oodaloy, so we need to address Mr. Oodaloy here. Set my secondaries to prioritize him for target. Line our shot up, and... Uh, destroyers are hard to hit with battleship guns. It's all about being patient and waiting. Now, I'm fairly confident that gearing didn't launch his torps, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll turn and chase the Oodaloy here. And... He is still... Annoyingly alive. However... I do want to prepare myself for that Zao. And we are detected. There he is. Get our heal up. He's moving away, so we want to aim higher. Come on, Mark 8 Super Heavy. 6,700 damage, 5 overpens. Not exactly earth shattering, but. You know, when it comes to uh, torpedoes, and uh, not torpedoes, when it comes to damaging cruisers, every little bit counts. Of course, they disappear. Look at that skill. They disappear well before I ever have to worry about it. And of course, our stealth pulled us out and away from, from the Zao just long enough in the island, too, to not have to worry about uh, him continuing to fire at us. Of course, that Oodaloy makes that kind of difficult, but... Well, we'll keep firing at the Zao. Mostly because I hate Zao's. 109,000 damage? We missed again. Oh, I wish there was something more interesting to shoot at. But anyway, the Iowa class is really quite a, a well laid out class. And in this game, it's a little frustrating at times to play it because of how soft the ship really is. The ship has undergone a couple of kind of painful nerfs since since the ship was launched in closed beta and all of them have been real real hard on the ship you know we had the rudder shift nerf they nerfed the turning radius as well because it did at one point in time used to have its 700 meter uh, turning radius which is just insane for a ship this size but anyway the the changes that have under that they've undergone have been kind of sort of offset by the changes in other factors. So one of the things they did is they, I'm oh, sorry, they removed the, the quad Bofor mounts originally, and I, I think that was done back in closed beta because at the time there was no tier 10 Japanese carrier. I don't think there was a tier 9 either, but if there was, it wasn't um, it, it wasn't capable. And the comic, it wasn't capable of damaging the ship because of those quad Bofors. Well, when they redid the, the ship line, uh, one of the buffs that they did is they gave it back the quad Bofors mounts. And that was a much welcome change. I, 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 I'm glad we got it back. And that Oodaloy is dead, and I don't think any of those shots would have hit him even if he would have lived. We managed to capture the middle point as well as the outer ring now we've got all three of them and the only thing that's left is a Zao that's running away 
One of the other changes that they did is they, they made the main guns more accurate. They changed the Sigma value of the of the main guns. And the Sigma value, there's a lot of uh, speculation as to what the Sigma value actually is, what it means. The last understanding I had was that it was the vertical dispersion. I have also heard the theory that it is the weighting. So, like, for instance, on the epicenter... The weighting, whether it's more centric weighted or outer ring weighted, the shell dispersion. So if, if that was a picture, the epicenter rings were the picture of the shell dispersion, the maximum dispersion, that 261 meters. The sigma value changes how many of the shots are more likely to end up in the center. I've heard that as well. Honestly, I don't know what the sigma value is, but they, they increased it. The increase made the guns more accurate, according to Wargaming. I don't know. End of the battle! That's how it survived. 109,441 damage, one sink, three citadels, one cap, one assist, 1,611 base XP. There you can see the, the detailed report and credit screen. Anyway, you can kind of see the flexibility of the ship with the speed, with the ability of the ship to maneuver, and the ability of it to stealth. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play, and it, it really takes us a lot of love to to really enjoy it but i like it anyway i'm your peacekeeper you guys know the drill like comment subscribe and thank you for watching